Chapter 78 Marriage and the Family Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 5 When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business. But he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife which he hath taken. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 5 Few texts are more revelatory of the difference between a godly social order and a humanistic social order than this one. Not the state nor the church, but the family is central to life. Because of this, the establishing and knitting together of the marital bond requires a year's sabbatical from all kinds of responsibilities. The modern honeymoon is unrelated to this because it is a departure from the family, whereas our text refers to arrests for settling into the family's life. A cognate verse is Proverbs chapter 5, verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 and verse 24, we are told, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Many verses in Proverbs tell us of the blessedness of a covenantal union and the problem of a bad marriage. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favour of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but he that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 4 There is much in Proverbs and elsewhere about marriage and the family, because the family is the foundation of the community and of life. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 requires a man to leave his parents and cleave to his wife. This does not require a break with the parents, but it does mandate that he is now the head of a new family and must cleave to his wife, assuming that she is a godly woman. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 5 makes it clear that marriage is a break for the wife. She is now under her husband's authority. Life has a different pattern, one that depends on her husband and his calling. During the first year of marriage, a husband cannot be recruited for civil or military service. While the text does not specifically bar him from working to maintain a farm, for example, it seems to require a minimal amount of work because his duty is to cheer up his wife. The meaning in the Hebrew is to brighten up or make joyful. The text does not mean that the bride is unhappy with her marriage, but that the husband strives to make sure that for his wife the new relationship is a privilege and a blessing. For both the personal and the national well-being, it is important for the bride to be happy and trusting. To be otherwise is to blight the marriage. The bridegroom cannot be involved in military or civil duties. This is a requirement of very great importance because it clearly indicates the priority of the family to the nation. Religious institutions are not mentioned because crises in such spheres are a rarity, whereas crises in national life are commonplace. No national crisis can take precedence over the new marriage because the family is most important in God's sight, it must always be protected. The Vulgate gives an interesting reading. The groom shall rejoice or take pleasure with the wife of his youth. He is free, literally, for his own household. He has a duty under God to establish a family as a physical and spiritual entity. 
J. A. Thompson wrote, Such a law is out of place in a modern state, but he recognised that the law gives priority to the family over the state. James Moffat's rendering of Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 5 is interesting. When a man takes a new wife, he shall not go on active service with the army, nor shall he be called upon for any enterprise. He shall be free at home for one year, to be happy with the wife he has taken. God's purpose in his law is not restrictive but expansive. Its purpose is to give us happiness and freedom in him. James calls God's law the perfect law of liberty. James chapter 1 verse 25, chapter 2 verse 12. The law of God is for our protection, happiness and liberty. This freedom under God's law is not anarchic, as Kyle and Dalich pointed out. Free shall he be for his house for a year. The focus for his house means for the new community his marriage establishes. In Numbers chapter 4 verses 23 and 30, the service of the Levites is described in English as to perform the service, or literally, as a marginal reading has it, to war the warfare. To do God's work is holy warfare. The various kinds of service cited in our text are aspects of our holy warfare. It tells us much about the importance of marriage and the family that exemption from such service is mandated by God during the first year of marriage. The term holy matrimony is a relic of such a view. In Deuteronomy chapter 20 verses 5 following, exemption from military duty is given to betrothed men. Here it is given to newly married men and it is from more than military service. We come now to two important aspects of this law. It reads, When a man taketh a new wife, meaning that this applies to more than a first marriage, It can apply to remarriage as to a widow. It is valid for a remarriage in which the children of both the man and the woman can be young or they can be of age and themselves married. The law applies to any and every marriage. Second, John Gill, citing Maimonides, stated that the exemption from public duty meant an exemption from all taxation for a year. In fact, we are told that this was a law Aristotle learned from the Jews and taught to Alexander the Great. Alexander, after the Battle of Granicus, sent his newly married soldiers home to winter with their wives and then return in the spring. This fact of exemption from all public service and exemption from taxation tells us how serious this law is. We have an echo of this law in the tax deduction a man gains on marrying and then for each child. It is a means of stressing the value of the family. In the biblical form, this stress makes clear the priority of the family and civilization. It is the primary bearer of faith and culture. When church and state seek to separate faith and culture from the family, both suffer. The law declares that the man shall be free at home one year. He is to enjoy himself and develop his calling and his marriage. He is free from extraneous duties. He is not to travel. He is to be at home for the year. It is clear from this law how important a family is in God's sight. This law is to us unusual in its stress in the family and very different from what we find in other cultures.